Does activism really matter in places like the UK anymore now that we have universal suffrage? Activism really matters in all places, even in countries where we have universal suffrage. And it matters because suffrage, the vote, is what, once every five years. It's a single event. And yes, we can have a parliament that reflects our views. But activism is about ongoing engagement. It's about a million and one ways in which we can make a stamp on the world. To your mind, what matters more, activism or voting? I think both are critically important. I wouldn't like to choose one over the other. Um, but I would say that activism is something that we can all do in so many different ways. And for me, it's a more powerful, ongoing engagement. It's an active citizenship. The very least you can do is vote, but that's just the beginning and that's just a single act. I wondered whether you feel that today's young women are uh, less engaged, less involved in activism than they used to be. Um, in the past, in the times of the suffragettes, clearly you had women, young girls, who were involved and got out onto the streets and marched and uh, were involved in the hunger strikes and all the rest of it. So they sacrificed a lot in their activism. I think the difference today is that in the UK at least, we can be activists without the level of suffering, abuse and all the rest of it that they suffered. What do you think her perspective would have been on those terrible attacks in Paris? Yes, I think Emmeline would be horrified by the violence that is done by um, ISIS, by an organisation that represents the very epitome of fundamentalist, uh, male-dominated ideas. You know, that uh, what they have done in terms of the violence and the bombing is an abomination and it is representative of the very opposite of what she was about. The suffragettes were militants. They were militant in a context in which the government forced them into militancy because of broken promises. Years and years and years of prom broken promises. So what they did was they ratcheted up uh, when they were not allowed democratic ways of uh, making their position hurt, um, they found alternatives. They never caused violence to others, um, apart from a bit of spitting um, that they sometimes did to policemen in order to be imprisoned, in order then to be able to stand up in court and make their statements, because otherwise they couldn't make their statements. So um, it was all about being willing to accept violence to themselves, the, the hunger striking, the for being force-fed, willing to take that violence in order to be able to make a statement. It was never, ever about violence to other human beings. What Emmeline would be supporting is all those women who are desperately trying to find a little niche, a little window of visibility in the societies that they live in. So take, for example, in Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is important because it's the last country in which women are given some right to vote. It's only a minimum vote, and it's only this year, it's on the 12th of December 2015, that there'll be some elections in which 1,000, just over 1,000 women are standing. And those 1,000 women standing in the most patriarchal of all societies are the women that she would be admiring and supporting and finding ways to ensure that their voice was uh, magnified. You've talked about many people being inspired by the suffragette story. Can you tell us who inspires you? I'm inspired, I suppose, politically by people such as um, uh, Hillary Clinton because of her longevity in the whole political world, the fact that she didn't give up, the fact that she is now possibly going to be the first woman uh, head of state in the, in the States. Um, also the fact that when she was Secretary of State, she visited more countries than any of the previous ones and always included a feminist agenda. So if it wasn't there on the um, agendas that she would given, she would always go and talk to women and so on. So she represented a lot of that idea about feminist politics. Um, Aung San Suu Kyi, who's just finally, finally been able to um, win in the elections in uh, Myanmar in Burma, also is an amazing character after 15 years of being house under house arrest and being silenced. Also in terms of coming back to that issue of activists, there are some amazing activists, young women, Malala um, comes to mind, Laura Bates here, who um, is just the most outstanding spoken the most incredible young um, journalist I, I've ever come across, really um, 
a, a powerhouse, if ever the, there was one, and she's the founder of the Everyday Sexism uh, campaign. I wondered what you think, um, Emmeline Pankhurst, your great grandmother, what would she have made of today's activists, do you think? I think Emmeline Pankhurst would be really chuffed, if that's the right word, at some of the wonderful women that are out there creating a change um, for the world in general. There are some amazing role models, and role models are pivotal. They're, they're absolutely critical in uh, people doing what they're going to do in life. I mean, I often hear people say, because of Emmeline, I did this, that, and the other, or because of Sylvia, my grandmother, she influenced me in this way. So I think that um, Emmeline would be really happy at some of the role models. I think there are many ways in which the world is, is beautiful compared to what it was like when she was living. It's less harsh in many ways. Um, however, um, I think she'd also be appalled at some of the areas of inequality that remain, at the violence against women that remains, at the uh, political inequality. And I'm just talking about the UK. I think if she looked at the wider world and some of the horrific conditions that many women and girls live in developing countries, she would be saying, what have you been doing? You know, there's so much more still to be done.